Okay, so I'm just waiting for my um, water to boil a little bit. And we're gonna drop, this is a rigatoni casserole. I love using rigatoni. It's fun to kind of change up the type of pasta you use. And this is very, very cheap, but it's a thicker tube pasta and it's nice because the sauce will get all in there. So I'm gonna brown up some ground beef in a skillet. Thank you, Ann. With some onion. Of course, you could leave the onion out if the kiddos aren't a big fan of onion. Or Ann. You could use onion powder. Or we talked about this yesterday. You could actually use a, a box grater like a you grate cheese with or a microplane and grate onion into the recipe. That works well too. Okay, we'll add in our onion, about a cup of finely diced onion. Hey, if you're not doing anything in a couple of weeks, I'd love to see you at the Gillette Public Library. I'm doing a holiday cooking class there Saturday morning, November 16th, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So. Call ahead to reserve your spot. Hope to see you there. If you can't make it to that one, I'm actually at uh, the Kimberly Library, Saturday, December 4th. So you can give the Kimberly Library a call there, and that's going to be a really fun one, too. Love coming out to different libraries. Ask your library to have me and cooking up some recipes and meeting all you guys. It's tons of fun. Okay, so I'm going to season this up with a little bit of salt and pepper. Halloween tomorrow already. I can't believe it's the end of October. Where did the month of October go? And you know, Bob and I were just talking about this. We really didn't, at least in my opinion, yours too, we really didn't get those fall colors that uh, we normally get. We're almost to November and we still got the leaves on our trees in our backyard. Did you notice that? Yeah, it was a, Ann says it, she thinks it has to do with the weird spring, but I was in Milwaukee this week and the leaves there are, are a lot of them still green and on the trees. It's just been a weird fall. So I wonder if they're going to turn or just going to drop off at some point or how that's all going to work. What'd you say, Ann? <laughs> okay, our water is just about ready to boil. Always important to season your water with a little bit of salt because it's really the only way to season that pasta and we're going to drop our rigatoni in. You see the shape of the rigatoni? It's kind of that fun, thicker tube pasta. The one thing when you're boiling pasta and putting it into a casserole. And I talk about this in both of my cookbooks, put a lot of quick tips and, and things like that is, you know, when you're doing a, a casserole with pasta, rice, or potatoes, um, first of all, you have, to have a lot of liquid in there because uh, that, that, you know, the pasta in this case is really gonna soak up that liquid and nobody wants a casserole dry as a desert. So you'll notice we're gonna put, be putting uh, quite a bit of spaghetti sauce in this case, liquid, in this casserole to, to you know keep it from being dry but also you want to cook your pasta or if you're doing rice or even potatoes just a little bit undercooked in this case al dente is the word for cooking pasta a little bit undercooked um, or firm a little bit firm to the bite because um, that way it'll hold up in this casserole because we're going to cook it and then bake it again and it won't get mushy and nobody likes mushy pasta or at least i don't so okay our beef is looking great While I'm doing this, actually, I should talk a little about, now that we're doing making an Italian casserole, our next big night out. Because if you can't get to Italy, it's the next best thing. It's coming up in just a couple of weeks. We would love to have you there. We are headed to Sam Brulos in Appleton on College Avenue. And we're going on um, Monday, November 18th. It is going to be one fantastic night. Five course meals, 
all paired with wines, and it's just 40 bucks a person. And that's kind of the cool thing about these big night outs is they're a great bang for your buck, really great deal. These local restaurants, and I love supporting local restaurants, um, basically are pulling out all the stops, showing you what they do best, and they're doing it at a great price. So this meal starts with a shaved beef tenderloin, a carpaccio with, uh, that you can put together on with uh, um, Parmesan cheese and lemon on uh, crusty French bread. Delicious, that's our appetizer. We're doing a, a creamy tomato, homemade basil, tomato, uh, tomato basil soup. Then we're doing a salad course, a caprese salad with fresh mozzarella cheese, sliced tomato and basil. The main course is a chicken pesto dish over cheese ravioli and then my classic favorite Italian dessert, tiramisu for dessert. How good does that sound? So call San Brulos today to reserve your spot. And if you're looking for more information, you can go to our website, fox11online.com, click on the living tab, and um, you'll see the big red and black box, and then click on that, and you can get all the information about it. Okay, time to work on the sauce, putting the sauce together. So my ground beef is looking great. Um, oh, forgot to put the garlic in. Hold on. Don't want to forget the garlic. Just gonna, I don't use it. I just saw this whole big thing about the garlic press. Some people love a garlic press. I think it's just one more thing to clean and the garlic gets stuck in them. And I know there's some good ones out there, but I just like to give it a, oh, you know, whack with the back of the knife. These are those Ergo knives that we use on the show that are fantastic. You can get them at Christopher's in Nanishwak. Um, but anyway, and then just give them a rough chop. That's the way I do garlic. I've tried a lot of those presses, and I know like some people swear by them, but I just was able to hang out with uh, one of the gals from America's Test Kitchen recently, and she's she's agrees she's not a big fan of garlic presses either. And in this recipe, the jarred garlic, if you're really in a hurry, you don't want to hassle with chopping your own garlic, works perfectly. The one thing with fresh garlic. I'm going to get this off the heat right now. The minute you start to smell it, get it off the heat. You don't want it to burn. Um, it turns bitter if it overcooks and, and burns, and it'll really kind of ruin the whole flavor of the dish. So about 30 seconds and then off the heat. Okay, moving on to this sauce, which is a little something different, and it's yummy. Okay, I'm going to lose the cutting board. Thanks, Ann. I'm going to do two eggs. This is a cheesy tomato -y sauce. You'll see where I'm going with this. I beat two eggs. You know the, the ricotta cheese filling that you, most lasagnas have in them between the layers? I love that filling. So this is again like a cheater's lasagna because we're gonna use ricotta cheese in with these eggs and it's going to make a nice light fluffy filling. So you could certainly use skim ricotta or whole milk, whatever, if you're lightening it up. Um, I love ricotta cheese and I think it's one of those things you, you just don't use a lot of. And it's yummy. Okay. I'm going to season that up too with a little bit of salt and pepper. I'm going to whisk the ricotta and the scrambled egg together. And I always do a little bit of egg in with my ricotta when I'm making lasagna because it just makes it fluffy. Now I'm doing some Parmesan cheese, grated Parmesan cheese. Ricotta doesn't have a lot of flavor, so this is going to give it some good flavor. One jar. 24 to 26 ounces, they, they're always changing the jars, of your favorite marinara or spaghetti sauce. And then here's another tip. I throw some water into the jar of marinara sauce, give it a shake. The recipe calls for water anyway. Just again, we want to have lots of liquid for this pasta. And that way you clean the jar, get every little last bit of the sauce out of the jar, and now we're ready for the recycling bin, so good little tip trick. So I'm gonna whisk in the sauce. 
and it comes kind of like a pink sauce. And in goes our ground beef with the onion. It just all goes in there in one big pot. You know, I think um, sometimes casseroles get a bad rap, but one of the reasons I love them, and this show is all about our favorites, is because you can actually, you know, companies coming, you've got your peop, you know, picking up some people from the airport and you want to get dinner out of the way. You can actually, you know, make this a day or two ahead and park it in your fridge and then just bake it off right, you know, before dinner's ready. Toss a nice big salad together, throw some French bread into the oven, make or even pick up dessert, and there you go. It's all in there in this case. You don't have to hassle with a bunch of side dishes. You know, life is so crazy busy these days, and I think that the people that try and do too much, just it just never works. So, you know, if you can, hey, say I made salad, I made a great casserole, um, that's all you need to do. And you don't have to be in the kitchen the whole time. So, you know, um, I think casseroles have really come a long way, and this one is definitely company or family. Your family will love it. Family worthy. Okay, so our rigatoni, nice and al dente. A little bit undercooked. Drain it well. Get that into our sauce mixture. Okay, I've already got one of those here, so I'll just give it a toss, make sure it's completely all coated. And you can see there's plenty of a couple of rigatoni overboard. They just didn't want to get in that casserole. My girl Ireland. She is a pasta nut, and Riley, my son, is a pizza, pizza nut. So between the two of them, they're going to like this casserole. They do like this casserole, I should say. Okay, spray your casserole dish really well with cooking spray. Dump that pasta right in there. It's going to make a nice big batch. You're going to have some leftovers probably to take to lunch during the week. Thanks, Ann. Cheese goes on the top. Shredded Italian blend or mozzarella or a combination of mozzarella and Parmesan cheese, about three to four cups, just depends on how cheesy you want it. And then I like to do just a little bit of, a teaspoon or two of dried Italian seasoning, just a blend over the top, just to season up that cheese a little bit. I like to cover this with foil for about 15, 20 minutes, bake at 350, uncover then the last few minutes of baking, just to brown up that cheese a little bit. Oh, oh, this is gorgeous. Wait till you see it. Bring this to the table, and let me tell you, I think it'll be one of your family's favorites, too. It's going to make everybody smile. Yum. Makes me smile, for sure. Recipe's on the website, by the way. You can also pick up this recipe at any area festival foods. Coming up, some more of our favorites, uh, chocolate flourless cake recipe, and we're going to be doing some cooking with wine.